Welcome to the Fermented Homestead. If we haven't met before, hey, my name is Anna. On this channel, we're pursuing gut health and a full pantry while we learn the skills we weren't lucky enough to have passed down to us. Today, we're gonna geek out on beans. Then I'm gonna show you how to prepare and can them so you don't start to feel the thunder from down under. We'll be doing a deep dive on what's really hiding inside those beans. Why some people love them, but others run for the hills. But even if you don't struggle with booty burps, there's a heck of a lot of other reasons you wanna prepare your beans with a little extra care. Today, I'm super honored to be taking part in Canuary. Lisa over at Sutton's Days is hosting, organizing, and partially sponsoring this whole collaboration. She focuses mostly on canning and pantry preparedness videos. And she even has a membership option you can join for extra community, knowledge, and support. So if you haven't already, be sure to head over and show her some love. The collaboration prizes are also being sponsored by Four Jars Canning Company. If you don't know them, where you been? These have become my go-to canning lids since they were introduced last year at Canuary. After almost an entire year of using these almost exclusively, I have yet to have a single failed seal. I know it's gonna happen eventually, nothing is perfect, nor am I, but so far so good. If you look in the description box down below or the first pinned comment, you'll find a custom link that's gonna take you over to the Four Jars Canning Company. It's just gonna tell them that I sent you there. And if you enter the coupon code FERMENTED10, you get an extra 10% off your entire order. And they have free shipping on orders over $50. You can use this code every time you place an order. There's no limit, so make sure you hang on to it. Gardening and canning season is quickly approaching, so you wanna make sure you get stocked up on your canning lids so you don't have to worry about them later. Thank you to Lisa over at Sutton's Days, and thank you to Four Jars for hosting and sponsoring this event. There will also be a link to the 2023 Canuary playlist and links to all the channels taking part in this collaboration. Be sure to subscribe so you can catch more of their awesome videos. When you watch and comment on all of the videos in the Canuary collaboration, you're gonna be entered to win prizes. She's giving away prizes every week, as well as some huge grand prizes that she's gonna be giving away on January 31st at 7 p.m. Eastern time over on Sutton's Days in a live chat. That's gonna include gift cards, a 23-quart Presto canner, and an All-American canner. The other ladies did a fantastic job of explaining the giveaways, so I'm gonna go ahead and keep my explanation a little bit more brief. If you wanna learn more about the nitty gritty details, make sure you check out their videos. So let's learn why beans are awesome and they kind of suck, but also how to prepare them so they don't turn your gut into a real life whoopee cushion. Depending on who you talk to, beans are either a superfood or a toxic booty bomb. Today we're gonna discover why both are correct, but how you prepare them makes all the difference. Beans have been a pretty standard source of calories and nutrition since long before agriculture even began. However, only in the last hundred years or so, we've lost sight of how our ancestors used to prepare these little fart balls. Beans are tricky little things. They look so delicious, covered in all those little specks of beautiful color. But what we don't realize is that under that colorful exterior is some pretty awesome and equally terrifying stuff, depending on who you are. So let's find out some of the good, the bad, and how you can make these gut busters work for you before you put them in the canner. Remember, I have no degrees or clinical training. I'm just a geek with Google and I love to share the things I learn. All of this is based on my understanding. I'll link any links or books that I learned from below. Please remember, we are talking about beans and fiber. I'll keep it PG, but most kids and myself think this stuff is hilarious, so that's not saying much. I mean, fart was in my title. So if you're squeamish, I feel proceeding involves a certain level of personal responsibility on your part. First, the fiber. Dietary fiber is an indigestible part of plant materials and made up of two different types. Soluble fiber is dissolved in water and breaks down to a gel-like substance and is fermented and digested by bacteria in the large intestine, releasing gases and increasing the health of your gut microbiome. Insoluble fiber does not dissolve in water. As an indigestible material, insoluble fiber just sits in your gut tract, absorbing fluid and sticking to other byproducts of digestion waiting to be turned into poo. Its presence speeds up the movement and processing of waste. For some who are blessed with or have earned a gut that would make your grandma jealous, Fiber's great, but others like myself will curl up in the fetal position at the mere mention of the gut-wrenching pain brought on by excess fiber. Maybe I'm being a little dramatic, but it really sucks, and for a lot of people out there, that's not an overstatement. Maybe I'm not talking about you, but someone you share the sheets with, and you're kind of sick of the musical evenings. But we're still in the fan club section, so let's uh, get back on topic. The higher levels of protein and fiber can help to stabilize blood glucose levels. This combination causes the beans to move slowly through your digestive tract, as the starch is converted to sugar slower than a snail uphill through molasses. 
molasses, causing you to not get that glucose spike you might get from other foods that contain equal amounts of sugar. High fiber diets have also been known to reduce the uptake of cholesterol, which can be helpful if you have heart diseases. Fiber can be a fantastic source of food for the little guys running around in your gut. When the gut bugs start to consume the soluble fiber that you've eaten, it begins to convert it over to butyric acid. What's butyric acid, you might be asking? It's a short chain fatty acid that helps with the health and healing of the cells in both of your intestines, and is the favorite fuel source of the cells lining the inside of your colon. It can even be used as extra energy for some of the cells outside of the colon. It's normally found in animal milks and fats, but through the wonderful world inside of a healthy gut, the little guys inside there can produce it. This is some powerful stuff. If you suffer from IBS, IBD, Crohn's, SIBO, leaky gut, or a myriad of other intestinal diseases, this is the stuff you need to patch it up. Butyric acid, I mean, not beans. Beans are actually terrible for those sorts of ailments. But we'll get to that later. Not all hope is lost. Butyric acid can help with weight loss, colon cancer, IBS, Crohn's, insulin resistance, and it's anti-inflammatory. And that's just one of the beneficial things found in beans. They have high levels of saponins, which can act as emulsifier inside your gut, and it'll go through and clean it like soap. It can bind with certain toxins and kindly usher them out of your gut. They contain alpha amylase inhibitors, which slows down the amylase enzyme, which is responsible for turning starch into sugar, meaning it keeps blood sugar spikes down. Beans also contain a decent amount of iron, calcium, magnesium, phosphorus, potassium, folate, zinc, copper, manganese, selenium, and vitamins B1, B6, E, and K. Beans are readily available, inexpensive, easy to grow, highly nutritious, and fills you up quickly. But even with all of that amazing stuff beans have going for them, they have a dark side too. And I'm not just talking about the fart juice. That same high fiber content that beans are so famous for can be a total gut buster for people like me. Even with all that good going on, beans do have a dark side. And I'm not just talking about the fart juice. The same high fiber content beans are praised for can be a real gut buster for people like me. Remember those two types of fibers we talked about earlier? The insoluble fiber are physical things like celery ribs and broccoli stalks, things like that, but provide some food for the gut bugs on their way down. But it's mostly bulk to help push things along if you know what I'm saying. The problem with this is that fiber can feel like stabby shards of death in a damaged gut, or it can make constipation even worse by causing a buildup of mass inside your colon with nowhere for it to go. Soluble fibers dissolve in water or gut juices and turn into a sort of glue in your gut. And it's a major source of food for the good guys that are in your gut. However, if food doesn't move through you quickly enough, that glue can turn into an intestinal blockage, causing a buildup of fermenting goo of misery. Even in a healthy gut, that ferment fermenting goo will create gas. That gas can be passed quicker than the last two players in musical chairs. Or it can be trapped in your gut, causing bloating and extreme discomfort. But fiber isn't the only culprit. Antinutrients are a big player in why beans can be kind of toxic. Grains, legumes, nuts, seeds, beans are the seed of the plant. Plant's mission in life is to reproduce, and seeds are how that happens. A seed has to put up with a lot of conditions and predators as the winter moves on, and remain intact with all the nutrients it needs to take that seed to a sprout so the next generation can live on. Plants can't run, so their defense is chemicals. Usually it's just enough to deter animals from consuming too much of it, causing low-grade comfort, which can accumulate over time. Occasionally, a plant will have enough to drop you to the floor quicker than you can chew it. There are a variety of chemicals, but we're just going to focus on three. Phytates, lectins, and oligosaccharides. You might have heard the term anti-nutrient. Those are a category of substances in plants that block the uptake of nutrients, block digestion, and irritate the intestinal tract. Antinutrients are found in grains, beans, legumes, seeds, nuts, and other things. Yes, I know beans are legumes, but since we're canning beans, I figured it seemed right to name it. Phytic acid can combine with calcium, magnesium, copper, iron, and especially zinc in the intestinal tract and block absorption, also called phytates. These are the chemical defenses of plants. Their priority is not to feed you, it's to reproduce. For beans to be able to sprout, they need to hold on to as much nutrients as possible. So it can release it when the conditions are just right for sprouting. So that little seedling has everything it needs to begin life. In order to hold on to those nutrients, phytates will create a bond around those nutrients, causing your body to be unable to absorb them. Fermenting or sprouting will break that bond, causing your body to be able to absorb those nutrients. Another antinutrient in beans is lectins. But lectins are sort of a double-edged sword. They're fine and even beneficial in moderation, but dangerous in high amounts. Beans, peas, soybeans, and lentils have some of the highest concentrations of any food group. So it can be a problem if caution is not taken. People can suffer from intolerance, 
insensitivity, or just overconsumption. Symptoms of that can include gas, bloating, nausea, diarrhea, fatigue, achy joints, and even a severe allergic reaction. Red kidney beans create an especially toxic lectin called phytohemagglutinin, which is present in raw or uncooked beans and can cause some serious gut disruption. So what's the real source that gives you the feeling of an alien residing in your gut? It's a particular type of sugar called an oligosaccharide. The human body does not possess the enzyme required to break this sugar down. So the oligosaccharide in beans makes its way through your intestinal tract undigested, where the bacteria in the large intestines finally feast on that sugars, which causes the fermentation and production of gas. Most release that gas as an air biscuit, but some of us grow the alien food baby of torture. But hang tight, I'm about to show you how to break up those rump rippers. Remember how I told you most of these things that cause us distress are a part of the chemicals defense system designed to hold those nutrients for sprouting. So we're just gonna mimic sprouting. Seeds need moisture, warmth, time and a little bit of acidity to begin sprouting. So we'll just mimic those conditions by soaking our beans for 12 to 24 hours in a slightly acidic water. I use apple cider vinegar. You can use some other things like lemon juice, regular vinegar, fermenting brine or whey. I like to make sure I'm using a living probiotic acid. I feel like that probably helps continue the process. This preparation process neutralizes the anti-nutrients and enzyme inhibitor inhibitors and enzyme inhibitors, releasing the nutrients being held for ransom. Remember, we aren't sprouting these. We're just making the conditions required to begin the process, which tricks those little things into releasing and neutralizing all those things that make us feel like crap. The canning process will also cook the fiber to smithereens, making it much easier for our fragile guts to digest. According to Dr. Natasha Campbell McBride, the most gut-friendly bean to consume are great northern beans. But this process works with any non-kidney shaped Bean. Are these great northern beans? I think so, but I forgot to label the jar. So for today's public service announcement, label your jars. You're not gonna remember. Late last night, I started the process of soaking these beans. First, I sorted through them, checking for any stones or funky looking ones. Since finding some stones, I've been pretty careful with the sorting process. Then I brought them to the sink to rinse them off and measured them into the jars I was using. The recipe called for three and a half pounds of dry beans per canner load of nine pints. I have no idea how much is here. We're weighing with our hearts today. But I measured the volume because we need one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar per cup of dry beans. And my colon doesn't play the guessing game. Then topped it off with water to cover by at least double and left it on the counter to continue absorbing the vinegar water overnight. And refreshed the water in the morning to continue the process until we were ready to can. Rinsing off the beans halfway through is a very important part of the process. That's the first stage of getting rid of fart juice. Most recipes suggest soaking the beans in plain water overnight. But the vinegar is a very important part of mimicking the sprouting process, and it's a super easy step to take. Soaking in plain water might help to alleviate the cheek squeaks, but that's not the only thing we're trying to neutralize here. So let's get to canning. I went ahead and drained and rinsed all our beans. Now we're gonna put them in a pot, a big pot. Add plenty of water to cover by at least two inches. Turn the heat up to high. Add the lid, bring this up to a boil, and let her rip for 30 minutes. The boiling, I mean. While this is warming up, we're gonna get our canning station all set up. And turn the heat to low. Over here, we're gonna need more than enough clean jars. A clean plate to set all your tools on. A debubbler or a chopstick. Canning funnel. Vinegar. Paper towels. Jar rings. And the piece de resistance. Four jars canning lids. Remember to get stocked up with my link and discount code below. While these are cooking, you're gonna notice a white foam that's gonna be forming on the top. Scrape it off. That's fart juice. The beans have boiled for half an hour, so now it's time to fill up our jars. I had to move everything around to make it fit better. I like to use a strainer. You can use whatever you like. That should be good. If you're feeling salt, it's gonna be a half of a teaspoon per pint or a full teaspoon per quart. It's not required, it's simply for flavor. Then we're gonna fill our jars to one inch of headspace with hot, fresh water. No vinegar in that one. The recipe says to use the cooking water. No. Dump that gut gurgler like a bad ex and move on. Stir the jar with your debubbler to get all the air bubbles out. That's a real thing, it's not another fart joke. Then we are going to top it off to one inch headspace exactly, which is the bottom of this line. 
This is the point you have to commit. Make sure there's nothing you missed because you don't want to have to do this process again. Wipe the rim down with a paper towel dipped in vinegar. The vinegar is not required for this particular canning recipe, but it's a good habit. And you should at least use water. Now it's time for these luscious lids. That's one thing I really enjoy about four jars is they have the bulk canning, so it reduces a lot of packaging. Secure them with a ring fingertip tight. That's as tight as you can get it with these three fingertips comfortably and into our canner. Okay, I'm gonna finish these guys up and I'll meet you over at the canner. Then we're gonna check all of our checks, put the lid on, close it, and crank the heat. We're gonna process these for 75 minutes at 15 pounds of pressure. If these were quart jars, it would be 90 minutes. This is definitely not a detailed canning tutorial video. This is more of a remove the misery from beans through proper preparation canning video. If you've never canned before, I do have much more detailed videos on my channel. I'll link the playlist at the end. But the lovely ladies taking part in this collaboration have even better ones. Remember, all of their channels are gonna be linked down below, so be sure to go and show them some love. And if you're new, learn all of the different steps, all the what's, why's, how's, and whatever might be involved with canning so you can have a safe, awesome experience. In our next Canuary video, we're going to geek out over canning broth. Can it gel and does it really matter? If you're finding me through the collaboration, welcome. I hope you stick around. I'm a total geek about gut healing, pantry building, and gardening. If you enjoyed yourself and all that sounds awesome, click this button right here. This is the subscribe button. This is what tells YouTube you want to come back here. Up here is a video that Mr. Google Pants thinks you're gonna enjoy. Down here is my last Canuary video, and then up here is going to be my canning playlist. I hope you're gonna check it out for all the awesomeness. Peace out, sauerkraut.